Well, hey everyone, this is Dr. Shelley Plum and I'd like to welcome you all back to From the Hip. Today we are going to take a journey down the nutrition path. We are going to talk about nutrition and really how specifically it pertains to diseases that, you know, a lot of humans are inflicted by. I mean, I for one have relatives and friends and even myself that have gone through some trials with regards to my health. And what has astounded me is that some of those diseases, well, all of them that I have have been encountering have some sort of tied to nutrition. So today, Plum Talk has ventured out and we have found someone who is very unique and has a very unique product. We have Scott Joseph with us. Now Scott is the founder of a company called Chimp Food. Now chimpanzees, yes, I, I'm talking about the monkeys, they have a very similar DNA and, and body structure to ours. And they eat raw food, they eat natural food, and they interestingly do not have the diseases that a lot of humans are afflicted by. So in a moment, we will be back with Scott Joseph, and we will talk more about chimp food. Well, hey, everyone. We are back, and I'm here with Scott, Scott Joseph, with Chimp Food. How are you, Scott? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You know what? I was looking at your website, and I have to know, I, I was reading about your story and why you started Chimp Food. Tell us about you. Why did you start this company? Well, uh, unfortunately, I gained a lot of weight okay. several years ago, and I uh, did what everyone did and tried all the different diets, the Mediterranean diet, the South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, high protein, low protein, and I tried all those diets, and none of them were working, and as I was going through the diets, they were kind of yin and yang in my body and me all over the place. Right, sure. And uh, I just kind of realized one day, how can this guy be right tell me high protein, and this guy be right tell me low protein, and the high sugar and no sugar, and it didn't make sense that there were so many different variables in the diet. And so I started searching of what is the perfect diet, what is really right for me to eat. Right, yes. And uh, just on a whim one day, I saw, uh, you know, hundreds of birds on the power line, on okay. electrical, right? We've right. all seen that sure. before. Yeah, definitely. So what happened to me is, is I said, look at all those birds. Not one of them is overweight. Not one of them has a disease or illness. Every single one of them are beautiful birds. And of course, then the Harley Davidson comes by. Uh -huh. They all take off. I said, look at that. Every one of those birds just took off perfectly. Right. But us humans, well, it's a completely different story. So I instantly kind of said, well, I'm going to eat like a bird. And thank thankfully, I had a witty friend with me. And he said, well, you're not a bird. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going to go eat rabbit food. And he says, well, you're not a you're rabbit. You're not a rabbit, right, exactly. And I said, wow. Your body chemistry is different. Uh, yeah, in different. fourth grade, we all learned our closest living relative was a chimpanzee. That's true. So I went straight home, and I dug right into those Jane Goodall books. Uh -huh. And uh, boy, I got a good lesson on diet and nutrition. That's interesting. You know, I, I'll share with you a story. On Mother's Day, do you know where I went for Mother's Day? Uh, no. No. No, okay. I went to Monkey Jungle. That's oh. where I chose for my family wow. to take me. And I will tell you what, it was mesmerizing. But we got to, they have a, uh, um, an enclosure, a show with a gorilla that they had rescued and it was incredible as they were telling us educating us on the nutrition of the gorilla and the mannerisms how similar it was to us mm -hmm. so what do you I mean what do chimpanzees eat well let's say this first of all we are 98.6 percent genetically like a chimpanzee we are closer to a chimp than a chimp is to an orangutan or a gorilla okay really we are actually closer to a chimp than a horse and a zebra. So we're, we're really, really close. And if you take the sense of smell out of the equation, because chimpanzees have an incredible sense of smell, right. that's half of our difference. So that means we're actually 99.4% like a chimpanzee. More importantly, our digestive system is exactly like a chimp. Our stomach, our liver, our kidneys, our pancreas, our gallbladder, our intestines, right. our enzymes and our acids are really dead on like a chimp. And even more importantly, our immune system is just like a chimpanzee. And, and however, they never, never get sick. They don't get heart attacks or strokes or cancers or diabetes or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, headaches, colds, flus, acne, asthma, arthritis, 
cataracts, the glaucoma. On, we it? could go yeah. on and on. Right. So um, I found out that they the majority of fruit. We are fruitivores. Uh, we are made to climb trees and eat fruit, and we love the taste of fruit and the smell of fruit. And chimpanzees eat about 60 to 70 percent of their diet is fruit. You know, one interesting <coughs> thing that we were talking before the show here, and we were talking about fruit and how a chimpanzee is not going to climb a tree and, and uh, you know, peel, and peel a banana, for example. Your products are interesting and very unique in that they what? They leave the peels on. Yeah, of course. We all know the best part of a baked potato is the skin. Yes. So the same theory goes across the board. The best part of an apple is that red outside. Because it's so dark and red on the outside, it has more nutrients, more antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So the same goes with a banana. Well, the healthiest part of a banana is the peel. The healthiest part of a pineapple would be the husk. And the mango is the skin, and we could go on and on. Right. But the best part is that really, really deep, dark, rich colors. And of course, the best fruits would be berries, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, because they're dark and rich in color all the way through. Oh. It's right. not just the skin, they're all the way through. And of course, you would never see an animal peel a banana. You would never see an animal cut the husk off a pineapple. You would never see an animal eat only the pink part of a watermelon. They eat the entire fruit, and that's a great lesson that we all can learn from animals. That's, that's very true. So I, I think we've identified the problem. I mean, with, with our diets, there is definitely, and I don't think anybody will dispute that, there is a connection be between some of the diseases that we have and also our nutrition. How does your product take that problem and address it? Well, uh, virtually every single one of our illness and diseases. Remember, we're going to take, let's mm -hmm. take infections out of the picture. Okay. Infe if you get sure. infected by a mosquito, get infected by a bee sting, or infected, AIDS, unfortunately, is an infection. Yes. Sometimes colds and flus are a virus that we would catch. But almost all of our disease, illnesses and diseases, especially our chronic illness and diseases, they are all diet-related diseases. Right. So if, di if they're diet related, that means we're not eating the right diet. If you eat the right diet, then you wipe away diet related illnesses and diseases. And of course, our top killers now are heart attacks, cancers, strokes, diabetes, and Alzheimer's. Those are all 100% directly related to our diet. So if we eat the right diet, I bet we could solve virtually all of our health issues. So your products, are they, for viewers out there that may not be familiar with chimp food, are they bars? Is it a juice? What, what is it exactly? Yeah, so we have two different products. Right. And of course, our, uh, and we don't want to use the word juice because no animals on earth juice. And juicing is just selling you the sugary water while you throw the best part yes. in the garbage. So I call it a food drink. So ours is a 16-ounce food drink. Okay. Whereas we, instead of taking an apple and squishing out the apple juice, we put the whole apple. Let's just ima imagine a blender. Okay. We throw the whole banana in there with the peel, the whole orange in there with the peel, the pulp and the seeds. The apple goes in there with the, all the, the good whole, stuff all the good stuff, yeah, right, yeah, with the seeds and the stem. The whole pineapple goes in there with the husk, the watermelon with the rind, the, the mango with the skin. And it's all grounded up, blended up, and it creates a food drink. You are literally drinking your food. It's just 100% real, raw, whole food that you drink. And it's based upon a chimpanzee's diet of what I alluded to earlier, 70% fruit, about 20% green leafy vegetables, more, more like uh, leaves, more like salads. Uh, chimps eat a lot of leaves. Right. And uh, about 5 to 10% nuts. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. So we, we actually have a, a treat for you. We have some guests who have submitted questions for you. Oh, great. Are you okay. up to some questions? I sure am. Okay, so your first question. You ready? Okay, yes. How is your body chemistry the same as a chimpanzee? So let's talk about that. Our body chemistries are very similar, as you were saying, to a chimpanzee. Let's talk about similarities first. The digestive system is similar. Very, very similar. I mean, it's dead on it. Okay. Is there any, any differences between us and chimpanzees, say with immune system? No. I mean, we vir virtually, we have, the same, we have every single bone we share together. Every single chemical we share together. Every lobe in our brain we share together. We are virtually as close as, as, as you can get. Again, we are closer to a chimpanzee than a horse is to a zebra. So I just can't imagine... 
you know, how, how anyone would, e e there might be subtle differences, but they're so small. Let's go back to diet. If I change my diet 1% or 2%, would it really make a difference? Not really. Right. So if us and chimps are 1% or 2% difference, would it really make a difference? No, not really. No, not in, pre w right. not in preventing the diseases right. that we we're right. talking we're about. Right, we're about 1% difference genetically. Right. But other than that, we're so close, it's really immaterial at this point. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. Another question I have for you, okay. or our viewers have for you. This one is actually from Michelle in Illinois. She says, what, and she got this off of your website, what is a sustainable food supply system, and do your products have corn syrup and GMOs and preservatives? What are your comments on that? Okay. So let's go with the corn syrup and the GMOs and the preservatives. Yes. It's no, no, and no. No, no, no. I like no. that. Okay. Uh, our, our ingredient label is just a whole bunch of fruits. Uh, some berries, some vegetables, some nuts, some seeds, and that is it. We have to add a little bit of water in there because it's a little bit too thick to drink, and that is it. So we don't throw anything in there that uh, a chimpanzee might not naturally eat. Right. You know, it's all real, raw, whole food. So it's really great. So it's just, and now get to the, the other part of the question, the sustainable food system. Yes. So to me, it's like when we have cows, let's say, and we eat cows, we grow the cow and then we kind of kill the cow and then the cow is kind of done and it's all done. Where the great news is with an orange tree or an apple tree, those trees year after year after year can continue to produce. And so I think that is what is really, really great about the difference of fruits and vegetables, is that we're not starting all over every single year, that those trees are right there, and we, all we have to do is give them a little bit of water, and we have, you know, food, continuous supply of food. That's great. That's great. Another question, this, this kind of leads into the third question from one of our viewers. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. It has to, it actually hits home for me because I am a mommy of three. Okay. And we're on the go all the time. Yes. Okay. We're in the car to BMX. We're going to all kinds of sports. So the next question is from Dana in Washington State. She says, we are a family on the go. Can your product withstand a hot car in the middle of the day, and will I need to bring a cooler? Well, that's, that, yeah, that's great, because actually in my car right now, I have a cooler. So uh, every single day, I prepare my food for the day, which is about four of these 16-ounce food drinks. Okay. So I, I'm about six foot tall, 180 pounds, and four of those drinks hold me all day long. So in the morning before I leave my house, I prepare those four drinks. They go into a cooler with a lot of ice. Uh, we live down here in subtropical region of, yes, South, of Florida. Yes. It's hot, but the ice and the drinks hold fine. And better yet, I actually can bring that into my office and sit it next to my desk. But a lot of times I prefer to keep it in my car, so I'm walking. A couple, whenever I'm hungry, I have to walk outside, get a little exercise, move my bones, right. and I can uh, and have some. So absolutely, they can withstand uh, on ice in a cooler. Well, that's good. I'm going to have mm. to get me some of that for sure. We but all should cooler. travel. We all should leave every day with a little igloo with some ice with our food for the day. Yeah, I yeah, agree Yeah, for with sure. That. Prepare our food, and, and let's make it at home. We know what it is. And that way, anytime we're hungry, what we need, it's right there. Yeah, I'm curious. <clears throat> you have been on the chimp food diet for how long now? Oh gosh, probably uh, four or five years. Four or five years, mm -hmm. okay. So let's, we talked in the beginning mm. of this interview about your story and how chimp food started and how the chimp food diet started. So let's conclude it. I mean, how, how are you now? Tell us your process through, you know, where you started, you know, the, you started the diet, and then where you are now. Let's uh, talk about okay. That. So um, it's funny you mentioned the Chimp Diet, which is actually I wrote a book, yes. uh, my first book ever. Great. So I wrote a book. It's called The Chimp Diet, uh, What Your Body Was Designed to Eat. So um, five years ago, I could say I was about 100 pounds more than I am today. Uh, my back was hurting. My knees were hurting. Uh, and my eyesight started going bad. I am over 50, and they say, oh, your eyesight. And it started going bad. And, you know, a couple other things. I just wasn't feeling. My energy was poop. And so as I started the first day, the second day, the third day, I mean, it happened. Excuse me. <clears throat> Should I start over? <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and just stop for a second. You want water? No, I'm okay now. Okay. I think it's just the continually okay. talking is what's right. doing so, it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's... So, okay. So, so my energy was kind of poop. Okay. So then, uh, every day that I started eating better and better, when I started eating like a chimp of the fruits and the, and the salads and the nuts, every day I started feeling better. 
my eyesight was getting better, my hearing was getting better, my weight was dropping day by day, and just my energy started going through the roof. So from there to here, I basically have lost 100 pounds. And I think the, the, one of the biggest things, I see very vivid now, I hear very vivid, I feel very vivid, I'm very a passionate person now, I feel just great, my energy is just through the roof. Uh, I've regained my manhood, almost like an 18-year-old boy now, so I can tell you, uh, and from head to toe, I am working, you know, full speed. I am on fire. That is awesome. So I, I, think it's, uh, I think we all could feel way better by just simply eating the right foods so our bodies work correctly. And when our bodies work correctly, it's amazing how good we can feel. It, it is, and you know what's hitting home, and it really, I'm, you're talking and the light is going on right now because the last couple of years I have made a concerted effort in my own diet to get more towards raw vegetables, the, the fruits, the vegetables, and we were talking about, you know, putting, you know, the peels into the blender, that type of thing. I've been doing that, and I go to the optometrist every year, and mm. do you know my eyesight has actually improved? Yes. Do you think that's a... There's no, no it's, coincidence, It's right? no coincidence. Everything will yes. improve. Mm -hmm. Every day that you get closer and closer to the chimp diet, right. you will improve. Once you hit the chimp diet, that's about, I think, about the best as you can get. No one can ever, you know, you can't really get any further past that. Yes. But of course, yeah, you're just going to feel better and better. And I'll give you just a little pointer. Chimps generally eat only fruit during the day. The minute they wake up, they start eating fruit till around 12 noon, 12 or 1. And that's it, only fruit, because of course they're high in sugar, we need all that energy, we need all that to get us through the day. And then they usually take a little nap uh, for about two hours. And what's interesting about that, when they wake up... Are you taking me, telling me to take a nap? If you could, day, if, like if, you. if you could, it'd be great. <laughs> well, I mean, our dogs and cats, I yes. mean, you can see that animals actually take yes. naps a lot. They sleep a lot. Only humans are, you know, we're wired all day long and then sleep for a period. Naps are very good for us. Yes. But the interesting thing of that two-hour nap is it gives our bodies that two hours to digest all the fruit. Mm -hmm. So we're almost cleaned out yes. after that. And then chimps generally, the second half of the day, only eat leaves which we would associate with the salads. Salad, yes. They only eat salads, which is great because then they're not getting jacked up on the sugars because they want to sleep around six o'clock at night when the sun goes down. Right. So they lay off the sugars, they start preparing almost for nighttime. Leaves, of course, have more salads, have more protein than beef or chicken or pork or eggs or fish. So it's loaded with protein, which will sustain you throughout the night. So it's actually, and then of course fruits and veggies are very, very different, so they're great to be separated because the enzymes and acids to digest the fruits are very different enzymes and acids that break down the vegetables. So it's always great to keep those two separates. Focus on fruits in the morning and then focus on salads in the afternoon. That's interesting, and I it, didn't know that. And if you notice I'm saying salads, I'm not really saying vegetables. Because there's not a lot, if you and I went walking yes. on the Appalachian Trail, right. we would see millions of leaves but we would not see a lot of broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, hmm. squash, pumpkin. You know, we wouldn't see a lot of cucumbers around. So vegetables is really a little bit of a misnomer. We're made to eat leaves or salads, not necessarily vegetables. Plus, you're probably going to eat the salads raw, but the vegetables, you're probably going to want to cook them and maybe put some kind of a sauce on them, which tells you we're not so keen on vegetables, but we are on leaves or salads. That's great. That's yeah. great. Well, Scott, we're going to take this opportunity. We are going to take a break. And in back, we will get some parting comments from you. Great. Okay, thank you. Oh, my goodness. I, the information that we are getting today is just amazing. And I, I'll tell you, one thing is ringing true, isn't it? I mean, back to the basics. Eating well, eating what, what we're supposed to be eating. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. I mean, we all know that squirrels only eat nuts. Yes. Right? We know that lions only eat antelope. Right. You know, we know that animals all have a specific diet for their body, for their species. Yes. And so humans are the same way. And ours is just fruits, salads, and nuts. And to me, that is what promotes health. That is what will uh, create a body that is made to defend from illnesses and really protect us against all other things that we can't really help us with. And one way of saying is everything else in a way is let's use the word poison. If you look up the definition of poison, poison causes harm to a living being and possibly sometimes could even create death. Right. 
That's true. Well, in a way, meat, dairy, grains, legumes, starchy roots underground, coffee, juices, those kind of things would be then be considered poison. So I think if we focus on what is good and brings health, fruits, salads, and nuts, and what promotes bad, which would be poisons, we have to really get back to the basics and focus on what our bodies were designed to eat and realize that every animal, what would happen if you had a horse that only eats green grass and you started feeding it a Greek yogurt? Would it be better or worse? No. Uh, what if you had a horse that's only designed to eat green grass and you feed it oatmeal? That would not be good. You know, what if you have a horse that's only designed to eat grass and then you feed it protein shakes? No, where our bodies are designed for a certain diet. Back to the basics. Back to the basics. I love that. So yeah. For our viewers that are out there and they're intrigued by this interview and they want to know more about you, Scott Joseph, mm -hmm. they want to know more about the Chimp Food Diet or even read your book, where would you point them? Yeah, the easiest thing is just our website, chimpfood.com. Okay. I'm easily found on Facebook, Scott Joseph. Uh, a lot of chimp stuff all over it. Uh, and healthy eating tips every day I'm putting out there. But uh, the website, chimpfood.com, is loaded with information, and you can email us or call us uh, very easily. Well, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for joining us today. This Thanks has really been me. very enlightening, and I can't wait. He brought some bars in for us to try. I can't wait to try them. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. All right.